ちょっと何考えてるのよネットにとって何なのただの便利やスンスンなWell, he doesn't see why she can't achieve anything that's her goal if she's adamant about reaching it. Unfortunately, Neto's called off to deal with a nebula incident, so she's stuck with his cleaning duties and having to lie to Mariko about it. Once again, since I feel like I need to repeat this, as the show applies it so inconsistently depending on the writer, Neto keeping his duties a secret was his idea to keep his friends out of the firing line. Considering he has to show his credentials constantly to other people in other positions to get into areas where only official agents can go, which makes for a very lousy secret identity if it has to be kept from everyone not already in the know. The way the other writers that aren't Kenichi or Rocky insist on using it never stops being stupid as a result. And this all once more preys on Mail's underlying wish that she could help more than just covering for him in mundane stuff. Especially with how Neto, when the good writers are here writing on the show at least, is taking his job seriously, and she feels she needs to step up as well. This makes her flash back to when they were even younger, and little baby Neto protected her from schoolyard bullies. <laughs> ほら、ほら。ネットも書いて。うん。私とネットがずっと仲良しでいられますようにって。うん。どんどん変わっていっちゃうみたいで。ちょっと寂しいな。Every competent writer on this franchise was unsubtly shipping the two. Even better that it ended up canon in the end. However, her support has not gone unnoticed. On top of Neto being eternally grateful, he actually asks her out the next day to show his gratitude. Hilarity! And some dare shenanigans. Soon? Nanigans? Ensues. As what happens here is, well, Neto, and thankfully the sub-makers also caught the context to this joke, accidentally used language that implies that Neto was asking Mail on a date. Roll reinforces this belief. And she dresses accordingly in the cutest thing she has, thinking that is the case. Which does actually catch Neto's attention. However, all Neto wanted to do was take her to Scilab, having asked Yuichiro to test her to see if her sync rate with Roll was high enough to potentially perform cross-fusion. Which wasn't at all what she really wanted, but still is in the vein of it considering that dream she had. 
And in this case, Neto did get what she really wants, a way to help out more than she does. And he does want to help her achieve her dreams. Thus, with her explaining only part of her dream and him only having context to what she explained, well, with just what he was told, he wanted to help her see if it was possible. And it is! Male and role synchro rate is higher than Goro's with Prismans, but they're just not quite there yet. Eh, I'd give it, say, a little over half a year. But that's where Sundere ensues, as this was nothing like what she was expecting. And it isn't Neto's fault. She made an assumption, and the assumption was wrong. Though there is a bit of a bait and switch here, as Yuichiro caught what Mail thought this was, and saved Neto from disaster as he has on him two passes to the local amusement park just for them. <laughs> Soon, soon! But before they can really get to enjoying themselves, well, Swordman chooses now of all times to attack them, interrupting any chance for them to have a moment, and striking so fast that, with Mail there, Neto is struck before he can transform, and the synchro chip is sent flying. She manages to rescue the chip while Swordman's distracted, tearing her dress in the process, but ends up drawing attention to herself in doing so, which splits them even farther apart. With seemingly no other options, and with Swordman stalking her... Well, no harm in trying. <laughs> yeah, suffice it to say, there were a lot of fans on both sides of the Pacific that were a bit pissed about this considering the propensity in henshin hero media for women and young girl members of the cast to be screwed over unless it is explicitly a magical girl hero series, though that has been better in recent days. This ends up being majorly remedied by stream when a team of cross-fusion wielders is ultimately built with near half the team being girls, but it's long been a persistent rumor that sex of stream were done in response to negative reception to parts of access this being one of them. Now, the way I would have tried to resolve it and do minor rewrites of this one is, it works for her, but she's only just on the threshold of it working so the gear can't stay stable on her, if that's only managing to get her briefly out of danger before failing. Which would work as proof that if she keeps trying, then she will be able to achieve the things that matter, but then allowing the rest of the episode to play out upon the arc, it's built that Mail needed reassurance that Neto's always going to be there for her and not just the reverse, as that flashback and then Neto's immediate actions protecting her from Swordman are paralleling. But there's nothing wrong either with wanting to step up and walk hand-in-hand in hand into battle with one you care for, so they'll mutually have each other's backs. And I think that's something missing from a lot of media that has combat as a significant part of it. It's rare to see an actual battle couple see showcase. It's either... The significant other holds down the home, the tuxedo mask effect, where they just show up all but briefly, the lovers, if they're even acknowledged as such, are separated, or they inevitably get left behind when the actual major battles happen. There has been so much reinvention of the cultural zeitgeist over the last 20 years on a lot of these matters, people playing up varied angles on fads and themes like this in their stories, but the layout always falls into those camps when it comes to two characters that are inevitably going to be lovers, and their roles in combat. I'd actually like to see a battle couple, beginning to end, fight together throughout all of their story. Code Geass got close, but didn't go all the way, thanks to the show screwing over Kallen, and its subsequent Zero Requiem arc kicked off. Gundam Build Divers kind of did it as a team thing, and technically Symphogear did it, but the paramour in that really isn't a battle couple, unless you count Kirika and Shirabe as a tertiary character pairing. I could go on with examples that kind of enter the range of what I'm talking about, but don't end up going all the way into achieving it. I don't know, it just got on my mind with this one, and really, the only thing that gets the closest these days is what happened to the Xenoblade Chronicles games, specifically 2 and 3. Still, Mail tosses the chip to Neto, allowing him to suit up and finish the job they started. 
unfortunately wrecking the playground where their mark had been drawn, but destroying one of Swordman's three heads in the process. But Neto gets his big damn hero moment by catching her before it's too late, and the dimensional area fails. <laughs> Oh no, there's worse ways for a first date to go. The wrap up. We have foreshadowing to male eventually getting the ability to cross fuse. No joke, when she eventually gets the ability, they literally use the animation for her suit up they created here. To the point it is a recurring animation error throughout stream that she's shown using the advanced model PT to do it, even when she ends up getting the Battle Network 5 style progress model. We have, yes, Lan, Dance is a bag of hammers, Hikari, it's a date. To both this situation and me referencing that line again from my review of Battle Network 4. I really wish Greg Sepalak had written his version of the line as such in Battle Network First Guidebook. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please watch my Battle Network game reviews. We have Sundere Explosion, to male being the most soon she's been in a while, particularly in a spotlight episode of her own after the last one where she also had heavy focus. We have Anime Glasses. For Yurichiro Hikari during his short part in the episode, having his glass lenses flare like Gendo Ikari's does in Evangelion after sticking his future red-headed daughter-in-law in a simulation plug suit. We all know what is being referenced here. Once more a strong outing for the show, alluding to things with kids that are just in that age to start thinking about those things, and mostly an appropriately done one, even though by the time the date actually gets going, it's pretty deep into the episode meaning you're almost expecting it to get interrupted before it actually goes anywhere. Meaning the game made it so they had a more successful date by proxy. Eh, one of the few merits of Battle Network 4. Too bad that entry is just a large mess of frustration. And even with me normally being endeared to non-abusive Sundere characters, this one I think presents how such a character should be portrayed as well. They're frustrated for something outside of their control and insecure about their own feelings. The cause is someone who is being reasonable and helpful, but because they get the wrong impression due to no one's fault, things go sideways. Bad writers who use Sundere's don't know where the lines are when they cross them. Thus they are portrayed more aggressive and hurtful, which reaches outside the limits of what can be considered proportionate response. And proportionate response is key to a good Sundere character. If they're angry and aggressive for no reason, or for the most inane of slights where there's no chain to it, it's just abuse by a bitch. And a lot of writers prefer to do that, because it was either easier, or said Sundere was a creator's pet. Noted author Rumiko Takahashi is especially guilty of this, as she basically popularized the abusive bitch interpretation of a Sundere. It is consequently forgotten that it's supposed to be a character trait part of a person. Not that the person is not, but that trait. Tiny distinction, but big difference when put into play. And the writers, for the moment, knowing when to dial it back or dial her up in turn, is what can keep episodes like this where she's full blast from coming off as awful. As I have seen other writers do this exact kind of plot wrong.